Good morning. Today is a, a day of tough memories in different countries and also in the in New York and the United States, in Washington. I was scheduled on Tuesday on that September 11th to be in Manhattan to give a retreat to young business lads. Was the, a big test of humanity. And there were victims from all over the world. I don't know, something like 90 countries or something. I forget, a lot of countries. The tensions in humanity. All the struggle of humanity. One of the things I personally was most touched with, I spent three days on the streets in New York after 9-11, was the extraordinary containment of the people. Obviously a total shock. But I must say that I never experienced hatred. Probably there was a lot of just dismay. The thought of all the planes of passengers being hijacked into the buildings on planes crashing into buildings intentionally very tough very hard but the dismay the shock a silence, a solidarity, because everybody was affected, everybody. And then there was so much helpfulness on the streets, all the local people. There were stations set up to look after to people who had requests who were looking for lost ones, loved ones, people who weren't answering their phones. And then there were huge lines in the streets going into those stations. And people were coming out of their homes or out of their businesses, which hadn't been affected directly. And they were bringing refreshments and sandwiches. next to the people. It was horrendous. I even visited the morgue. I had permission to be able to go there. And there was nobody, no, no, no bodies. They had expected a huge influx of of bodies and that wasn't how it transpired A tremendous cloud of grief of shock of astonishment a 
helplessness. It was amazing. And the prayer ceremony then on the, I think it was the following Sunday on Broadway. I remember meeting, saw a man sitting on a chair, a young man. A lot of people gathered around him and I approached him. His wife was missing. And in his case, the conclusion was pretty serious that she had her life lost. And he told me that she was pregnant. And afterwards, I had occasion to be with him a few more times because they finally discovered her body because she had breathing problems and she had gotten out of the building and taken refuge under a truck when the building started to collapse. So her remains were protected under the rubble. And so I was involved with her funeral. It was a mixed marriage. One was non-practicing Catholic, the other one was non-practicing Jewish. So it was very special. And then we have that type of experience in humanity in front of tsunamis and earthquakes. Now a new earthquake. With many casualties a couple of days ago. accidents at the smaller scale but a bereavement in a family a world is shattered and before the mystery of death before the mystery of hatreds that cause wars the mysteries of injustices by human beings toward human beings that cause huge conflict. Here we got over this wall, guys, okay? Just bear with me. The path humanity is on has been on for millennia. And in the midst of all that, light also shines in the goodness of people responding. And then there can be also reactions of hatred and brokenness. I know many people in New York whose lives were deeply changed for the good because of the experience of 9-11, a recalibrating of priorities, attention to family, a recalibrating of the importance of career if it had overtaken life too much. But then we human beings often revert to former patterns because we're built in a certain way. Through our actions and our decisions. I have a little quotation somebody gave me. And it says, we make decisions, but the decisions we make, make us, shape us. We make decisions, but the decisions we make, shape, make us. Another application of that is about work. You know, we do work, we make stuff. But actually, the reality of working makes us. It shapes us. So 
So sometimes people have a great difficulty in in um, holding on to new understanding because of major circumstances like this or a good retreat or even a momentary grace of God. I want to change my life, but there's a tremendous inertia. It's like trying to move a mountain up there, you know. How do you move it or to move this wall? You know, it's, it's built like this. It's kind of hard to change. We're built like that. This little idyllic scene out there. I'm not sure if they're fishermen or who they are at this distance. It could be a fisherman for the kind of boat it is, but they're usually not out that far. And I think that's the confer that's out there on the paddleboard, having quiet time for his prayer. I don't know if I can get him on the screen. He went out a while ago. There. He's, that he's still in the center of the screen, so just so you can get the proportions, the relationships. And in a huge contrast to all of that, I find this first reading, amazing reading. And the Psalm also expresses this reality. And God is my safety and my glory. So the glory of a great financial career in Manhattan was recalibrated in the light of the disaster. In a way also like COVID recalibrated many people's priorities. The question is how to be able to hold on and to persevere on the path that one chooses, a new path. In God is my safety and my glory. We could start off with in my, is my glory. It's uh, the relationship with God is is so big, so, so amazing. I just love the letters of the Colossians and the Ephesians, they're very similar. There's such a, an enthusiasm. 49 years ago this week, a whole new chapter was happening in my life. Finished high school on silent retreat. another bunch of guys preparing to follow the call of the priesthood in the Revishit in Dublin and being fascinated by this drawing closer to the person of Christ and both the letter of the Colossians and the Ephesians now as I read them and the prologue of John's Gospel they're like synthesis of who he is. And became extraordinary North Pole and the way to align my life. In fact, the, the motto over our novitiate entrance in all, our, in all the countries is uh, Christ, my life. Christ, our life. Christ, your life. Actually, it's written in Latin, Christus Vita Vestra, Christ, your life. To all coming in. If you're coming in here, make Christ your life. That doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen easily. There's a lot of learning throughout the entire life to discover the mystery of Christ. 
and Paul's letter from prison. He already has quiet. He's, he can't go all over the place preaching and he's delving into this mystery. Amazing. I'd love to comment the gospel passage as well. The curing of the paralyzed man. The impact that had on his disciples. We look at humanity today, the need for a cure for all the paralysis in humanity. All the things that cause dysfunctionality like 9-11. The gospel that was shared here by Jesus has still a lot of work to do in the world. People, God bless you. Come on, selfie. There we are. See you later, alligators.